Let's now take a look at idealism in relation to the observer effect, specifically at a consciousness causes collapse solution to the measurement problem, as argued by Inspiring Philosophy in his video titled The Measurement Problem. I'm going to turn this issue on its head, and I'm going to argue that a consciousness causes collapse interpretation is in fact incompatible with IP's worldview. First of all, we need to recognize that IP holds to both monism and idealism, and therefore rejects dualism and realism. These are separate categories, one doesn't automatically follow from the other. IP has argued against realism in his videos on quantum physics, and he has argued against dualism in the following section of his video on the introspective argument. Premise 3. Substance dualism is false. According to substance dualism, there are two fundamental kinds of substances, matter and mind. However, this view quickly leads to problems regarding the interaction of matter and mind. The internal contradictions of interactionism demonstrate that two fundamental types of substances cannot interact. If they did, they would interact via a shared property. However, if they share a property, then they are not separate substances at all. Either mind shares a physical property with matter, or matter shares a mental property with mind. As such, substance dualism becomes incoherent on close inspection and must be rejected. So it's IP's position that substance dualism is incoherent, and I completely agree. I hold to monism just as he does. The difference is that I am a monistic realist and he is a monistic idealist. However, is IP's monistic idealism compatible with his own philosophical arguments on the basis of quantum physics? Or has he unwittingly been arguing against his own worldview? First let's make some distinctions. We need to recognize that monism and dualism, and idealism and realism, are independent categories dealing with different aspects of ontology. Idealism is about the fundamentality of subjectivity, i.e. the necessity of mind, and realism is about the fundamentality of objectivity, i.e. the necessity of mind-independent reality. Monism, dualism, and I suppose pluralism, since I'm not aware of a term that means three or more, are about the number of essences or substances of which reality consists. I find the term substance problematic in this context, but it is the term commonly used. Monism is the view that reality consists of only a single essence or substance. Dualism is the view that reality cannot be reduced to merely a single essence, but that there are two separate ontological substances. The most common expression of this is a duality between material and mind, although that is definitely not the only type of substance dualism. And for a lack of a better term, pluralism extends this to three or more ontological essences. Now let's be careful here. One must not mistake the independency of these essences or substances for a causal relationship or lack thereof. In other words, a dualist does not have to believe that both substances exist necessarily. In fact, I suspect that the majority of mind-body dualists believe that the physical exists contingently, whereas mind exists necessarily. Dualism does not have to mean that there are two fundamental essences, only that one essence is not identical to the other and cannot be reduced to the other. For example, the view that a divine mind created a physical realm, the physical realm is not identical to the divine mind in essence, but does exist because of that mind. Contrary to monism, for example under materialism, a monistic realist view, the mental is not some sort of immaterial substance that is somehow created by the physical, nor is it the view that the mental is an immaterial substance that exists causally independent from the physical. Under materialism, the mental is simply a label for a collection of specific physical processes. One must also not mistake this distinction between ontological essences with how we speak in different categories. After all, there are all kinds of dualities and pluralities in our language. For example, as I explained in part 4 of my series on understanding materialism, the conceptual, under a monistic view like materialism, is not a separate ontological category, but also cannot be regarded as a set of physical objects. Rather, these are so-called fictions, an expression or description a way of speaking about reality, and therefore contingent upon the mental, which also cannot be qualified as a physical object itself, but rather as a collection of physical processes. 
In other words, under monism there may be all kinds of dualities and pluralities, but not in the sense of ontological essence. We also need to recognize that ontological dualism is not necessarily about a duality between mind and material, that's only a specific expression of it. All that is required is a substance X and a substance Y. To use the conceptual as an example again, another expression of dualism could be a dualism between platonic forms and shadows of forms, where the latter includes mind and material, or a dualism between forms and mind, or instead of dualism, a pluralism of forms, mind and material. So when it comes to idealism, the view that mind is fundamental, one can be a mind monist, in other words monistic idealism, the view that all is mind. This is the view for which IP argues in this video, the introspective argument. But one can also hold to dualistic idealism, the view that mind is fundamental and creates or generates a second ontological essence. For example, that mind brings forth and interacts with material, or some sort of immaterial essence. In other words, the mind brings forth some sort of non-mind. And in this video I will argue that if one wants to defend idealism on the basis of quantum mechanics, it would have to be at least dualistic. It cannot be monistic. So I'm claiming the following. If IP wants to argue that quantum physics debunks realism, he would also have to argue that quantum physics debunks monism. So I want to present IP with a trichotomy. We have IP's arguments on the basis of quantum physics, monism, and idealism. I will argue that at most two of these can be correct. I of course believe that only one of these is correct, but I will argue that at most two of these can be correct, and not all three. This would mean that IP will have to reject one to save the other two. However, the rejection of any of them would lead to unacceptable conclusions for his worldview. Either his quantum mechanics videos were a waste of time and do not support his monistic idealism, which leaves him without much support at all for his position, or he has to reject monism, which leaves him with a view on ontology which he himself regards as incoherent, or he has to reject idealism, which is precisely what he has been arguing for all along. So that's the trichotomy that I would like to present to IP. So why are IP's quantum mechanics videos incompatible with monistic idealism? Well, let's take a look at his video on the measurement problem, in which he argues for a consciousness causes collapse interpretation. Which sounds nice, but what would it actually mean if only mind exists? First of all, what would the universe be a label for in an idealist ontology? Well, a dualistic idealist would either hold that the universe is in fact very much physical, but simply generated by minds which are distinct from the physical realm and are fundamental, whereas the physical universe exists contingently. Or if the dualist rejects the existence of the physical altogether, that the universe exists of some sort of nebulous immaterial substance which is brought forth by mind and with which mind interacts, which generates our experiences. So what is the word universe a label for under monistic idealism? Well, it would be a label for the collection of experiences of all minds. In other words, the universe would be the collection of all qualia. For example, under monistic idealism, the computer in front of you has no independent existence. It is not an entity, it is simply an experience. A combination of image, sound, feeling, etc. that we label as computer. Basically, it's like when you dream of using a computer. There is no actual computer there. It's not the case that you actually create a computer in your dream, that for the duration of your dream an actual computer comes into being, external to your mind and goes out of existence again when you wake up, because its existence was sustained by your mind. No, computer is simply a label for a specific experience of a sequence of images, sounds, feelings, etc. In other words, under monistic idealism there are no objects. But we use the word object and specific labels for specific objects as fictions to make distinctions between experiences, a way of modeling our experiences, to distinguish between them and to speak about them. 
keep in mind that hard solipsism is a monistic idealist view. The difference between hard solipsism and IP's view is merely the amount of minds. A solipsist believes that all is one mind, and since one cannot deny it, a solipsist believes that all is one mind, and since one cannot deny the existence of one's own mind, you yourself are that single mind. Other monistic idealists believe in a multitude of minds, and theistic monistic idealists like inspiring philosophy believe that one of these minds is special and in control. A distinction between one divine mind and a multitude of lesser minds. The reason why these lesser minds have the experiences they have instead of others is due to interaction with each other, but especially because of what was set up by the divine mind. Now what this specifically would mean and how this is supposed to work is a very good question and I would argue that theistic idealists haven't given a coherent answer and I'm not sure how they ever could. But given that we are talking about theistic monistic idealism, we can at least rule out any appeals to a second substance or essence, whether physical or non-physical. No second essence would exist. There is no such thing as non-mind in this view. For the theistic dualistic idealist, God could have created either actual material or some sort of nebulous immaterial essence which these lesser minds can somehow interact with, causing their experiences. For the monist, this is not an option. So which of these views is at least compatible with a consciousness causes collapse interpretation of the observer effect in quantum mechanics? Well, we would need to ask what the quantum world would actually be if monistic idealism is a correct description of the ontological nature of reality. What is quantum physics actually studying in such a world? Let's take a look at a segment from IP's video on the measurement problem. Another measuring device to collapse that initial measuring particle to a definite state. But then you need something else to collapse that measuring apparatus as well, and so on and so on. This creates a chain of material objects in a superposition of measuring, which is known as a von Neumann chain. Since quantum laws are what truly describe all material objects, some other particle or measuring apparatus is always needed to collapse the next one in line. You keep going back until you get to something that would be non-local, outside the entire material system, which escapes this chain by not being bound by the same physical laws, and is able to cause final collapse of everything in the chain, which is argued to be a conscious observer, something beyond the material, with the ability to collapse the entire physical system. The problem here is that the von Neumann chain is very much incompatible with monistic idealism. We need to understand that under monistic idealism, the meaning of the measurement problem, in fact the meaning of quantum physics itself, or even science as a whole, changes completely. A monistic idealist universe is a world of qualia, not a world of either a material or immaterial something which can be interacted with. Subatomic particles would not exist, not even in the sense of how a computer could be said to exist in the example I gave earlier, or how it could be said to exist within a dream, namely as a label for a collection of qualia. After all, we can still meaningfully speak, for example, of a measuring device as a label for a collection of qualia, but the same does not apply to the particles which this device is supposedly measuring. We do not have qualia of subatomic particles. The result of measurement are displayed on a computer screen, which would indeed be a collection of qualia, but would also be as quote unquote macroscopic as anything else that we experience. In other words, if monistic idealism is true, there is no actual process of measuring taking place, merely a change in macroscopic qualia, so to speak. Consider the following thought experiment. The double slit experiment is set up in room A and several scientists are present in room B. No person is present in room A, only the equipment. In room B there are computers on which the result of the experiment are displayed. Now consider that this is a monistic idealist universe. Can room A even be said to exist? No, there is no room, no equipment, no particles going through slits because there are no slits and no particles in any kind of state. Nothing in that room exists because there is no room. 
only room B exists and only in the sense of it being a label for the collection of qualia of these scientists. Whatever is displayed on this screen, and whatever the explanation is for why it is that specific result, it cannot have anything to do with particles going through slits. There is no chain of collapsed objects here. There is no von Neumann chain, since only the observer in this chain exists. The rest are mere fictions, a way of speaking, literal ideas. Now one could argue that God could be the observer of room A, but that leads to a severe problem which IP already had to work around of. So the evidence suggests we are just lesser minds dependent on a much larger one that is actually in control of the structure of the experience, and we are allowed to operate and be able to participate in the outcome of the idealist experience. Now one objection to the theistic perspective is raised in the quantum enigma. If God is observing the physical world and us in it, then how come we can do experiments showing something unobserved is in a superposition? In other words, if God is looking down at everything, the strange rules of quantum mechanics should never have been verified, since they are always being observed by God. Well, this is a misunderstanding. God is not separate from us, some place in space observing us, as space and matter are illusions of our conscious observation, as the falsification of realism shows. The existence of the physical world is created by our observation of it, and it doesn't exist other than that. So what is there for God to observe other than what we see? Consciousness is what is fundamental, and our consciousness would be dependent on a larger one. God is in a sense observing us having an experience of the physical world, and apart from our experience, there is nothing that needs to be observed as it exists in the state of a wave function. So he is not separate from us as our consciousness is dependent on his, and he doesn't need to see an independent experience of the physical world. So God has no independent perceptions of the universe according to inspiring philosophy. So if no person is observing room A, there is no room A. In other words, the double slit experiment that is supposedly going on there is nothing more than a fiction. I have argued before that monistic idealists would have to reject scientific realism, and this would be yet another reason. Now let's consider this thought experiment in a dualistic idealist universe. In this view, the idealist could argue that, for example, God created some sort of non-mental essence and that this is what the universe consists of, and this is what the lesser minds somehow interact with to generate their experiences. Consciousness causes collapse in this context would mean that the minds of the scientists are the ultimate cause for why both rooms are in the specific state in which they are. But of course, this view suffers from all the problems associated with substance dualism. But it at least would be an idealist view that is actually compatible with a consciousness causes collapse solution to the measurement problem. Now to be clear, I don't believe any type of idealism can be concluded from quantum physics. But the point is that even if we take IP's video on face value, we, including IP himself, would either have to reject the arguments in his videos, reject monism, or reject idealism. 